We've got a release date for the RTX 4070. Both Discord and Samsung are embroiled in controversy, and we've got the first benchmarks for the 7800X3D. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, March 14th, 2023. We're gonna start off today talking about the RTX 4070 launch date. We had reports in the past that NVIDIA was looking forward to launch this mid-tier card sometime in April, and now a well-known leaker is giving us more specific details of this card launching on April 13th, which happens to be a Thursday. So it looks like this GPU is gonna be coming right on down the pipeline. Again, we still don't know the pricing of this graphics card. I think it's safe to assume it's likely gonna be in the $600 range. Just based on the estimations of everything else we've seen from Nvidia, I do not see them matching the price of the RTX 3070 to come in at 500 bucks, but I would be happy to be wrong, just like I'm happy to tell you about today Today's video sponsor, Jawa. I love Jawa for so many reasons, primarily because I've been asking for something like this to be in the United States ever since I moved back from South Africa, and now it is finally here. Jawa's mission is to be the community where great gaming gear is sold at reasonable prices, meaning that it's a specified place where gamers can sell their PC parts or buy them. I had this in South Africa, I needed it here in the US, and now it's finally around. They've verified sellers to make sure that it's a trusted marketplace to make sure that you're getting the best prices out on the internet and making sure you're actually getting what you purchase. They also have a new commissions build program where you can fill out a short quiz about what type of PC that you need, what type of games you want to play, what FPS numbers you want, and the system will automatically pair you with a verified seller who can build the PC for you, completely made for your specifications. They also have a very strong active community with over 8,000 members on their Discord where you could ask all the questions, they have contests, lots of giveaways that you can check out. But one of the coolest things that they now have is that if you're looking to sell your graphics card, you don't have to go through through the hassle of taking photos, putting out the listing, dealing with the person who's buying it, going through that whole classifieds process, Jawa will buy your GPU directly from you, so it can help to fund that next GPU upgrade that you're looking at, or it can help somebody like me who has just random graphics cards lying on the shelf. I made sure that they actually can support a lot of the ones I have, like an R9 390. That's on the list of a GPU that they'll buy from me directly, no must, no fuss. It goes straight to Jawa, and then I have the money, they have the card, and I don't have to deal with it anymore. So whether you're looking to buy or sell gaming PCs or your gaming parts or pick up a new upgrade or even sell your GPU directly to Jawa, you can check them out at the link in the video description. Let them become the community for you to buy and sell gaming gear. Check them out at the link in the video description. Big thanks again to Jawa for sponsoring today's video. But I can tell you that Jawa will not have this GPU in the list of cards that they will buy from you because it technically doesn't exist. The RX 6300 graphics card from AMD is possible popping up on a marketplace over in China. And the weird thing about this is that AMD never officially launched it, neither to the public nor to OEM. So the fact that this exists at all is quite curious, even though we do have some details on the specifications of this card. It appears to be a cut down version of the RX 6400, coming in with less memory, a slower GPU clock and less memory bandwidth and drawing only 32 watts of power. It appears that this thing is only for display out. The price of this card over on the Chinese site is of roughly $60. It's it's going to be up to you whether or not you need it. This is not going to be for gaming. Likely not even going to outperform an integrated GPU on the new Ryzen 7000 chips. This is probably not something you want, but it does unofficially exist. And the 16 pin power connector unofficially exists for Intel, even though they were part of the designing of the ATX 3.0 power supply connector that you see on Nvidia's new GPUs. They're not actually using it on their graphics cards. However, they are issuing a statement saying that, hey, we know the best design that everybody should be using. Stop using the three dimple design that is on this power connector. Instead, use the four spring connector. As you can see right here, the three dimple design is on the left, aptly named the four spring design is on the right. And this is because of a lot of the power connection issues that we were seeing early on with the RTX 40 series, where if the GPU was not plugged in firmly, then it could potentially lead to the connector melting. And the four spring design can hold on to the connector more appropriately. It doesn't prevent it from coming loose and potentially burning out, but it's going to give you the best chance on that first plug-in. So Intel just making it known to the world that you should use the four spring design. That's the one that they officially support since they're the ones who designed it. Since they were part of designing it in the first place, they're now saying it even if they're not using it. And you know what's unofficially the best part of hot news? Reese. Nope.
Thanks, Reese. Thank you for faking those deals. I know they're not real. They're AI enhanced, just like Samsung is getting called out for AI enhancing their moon photos that are appearing on their S23 Ultra devices, or even going back all the way to the S20 to 21 Ultra, they've all had some sort of moon photography version. However, one of the things that Samsung has said is that they don't use textures or overlays and that it's not fake, specifically referencing that in comparison to other companies like Huawei that do enable textures for the moon. One of the reasons that this even matters is because they use it so heavily for marketing and promotion. This is something that a lot of tech YouTubers talk about. Look at how good the picture of the moon is. Samsung saying it's not fake, but there are people who are testing it, putting it out there and showing that Samsung's getting up to a little bit of a funny business. Even if they won't say it's an overlay or a new texture, they are faking the photos even when the moon isn't actually in the picture. Samsung officially says that they use a detail improvement engine function to effectively remove noise and maximize the details of the moon to complete a bright and clear picture. However, it's being found in testing. You can see this video that's playing right here. When somebody blurred a photo of the moon on their computer and then took a picture of their computer monitor from across the screen, you can see that it adds in details that are not on the actual computer monitor. So it's not that Samsung is taking a picture of the moon in this instance. They're taking a picture of pixels of the moon that have been intentionally blurred and then adding detail in after the fact. You can see the before and after. On the left, you can see that that's the image that the phone took a picture of. And on the right, that's what came out with Samsung adding in detail. Now, it's really difficult to say what Samsung is doing behind the scenes. They say it's part of their scene optimizer, which is a special sauce that AI enhances it. But it's very clear that even though the AI is supposed to bring in details that are supposed to be there, it's adding in extra steps. It's taking information not present that's not an actual moon and then just slapping it on there. So if the moon got a new crater today that everybody in the world saw, whatever the AI would add to this fake picture would not be relevant to what the moon actually looks like. It's only trying to find out what the moon is and then adding it in. And again, this only matters in the scheme of how they're positioning themselves in the market. They're both simultaneously saying we have the best product on the market while crapping on their competition and then not actually delivering the value that they say they're delivering. I'm curious to know where you land on this Samsung Moon Photo AI controversy. I want to hear from you down below in the comments, but Discord also getting into some controversy with regards to a privacy policy update that came with their AI update that they brought out late last week. The AI update implementing features like ClydeBot giving you more descriptive and actionable setups. You got AI generated summaries of threads taking place in Discord in case you weren't following along prior to actually jumping in, but Discord also updating their privacy policy to remove details of how they're collecting and storing your video calls, voice calls, or channels with the previous privacy policy saying that they would not do that. However, that language getting removed from the updated privacy policy. But then a spokesperson for Discord came out and said that nothing's changed on the back end. This was not supposed to have been removed. They recently adjusted their language, which inadvertently caused confusion amongst their users and nothing actually changed. And they've reinserted the language back into their privacy policy, along with some additional clarifying information, which includes that if they were to change this part of the privacy policy, they would disclose that to Discord users in advance and that they do not store any of this data and it's not likely to change at the given moment. The big hullabaloo around this is just the fact that Discord is using AI. If they are storing and keeping that content, they could potentially be using things that you're creating to help generate more advancements in that AI or potentially have a repository that could be hacked or leaked in the future. And users were not in favor of that. Discord saying that it's not the change right now. We'll see if that happens in the future. But Rivian trying to make a change for themselves, and that is getting out of the exclusivity agreement that they have with providing delivery vans to Amazon. Part of this is because Amazon has said that they want to purchase up to 100,000 vehicles by 2030, but they need to do that in increments every single year, and that Rivian is not making as much money as they possibly could because Amazon only wants to purchase 10,000 delivery vehicles this year. So Rivian's trying to open up the agreement to sell these delivery vans to other companies. I've seen a few of these here around Pittsburgh. They're actually really neat looking. They look like a Rivian Amazon delivery van, but maybe they'll be coming out with different branding to your streets in the near future. And so Brent's coming out with a new SSD to your PC streets with the Rocket X5 getting announced. This is supposed to be their first PCI Express 5.0 SSD. That's going to be one of the world's fastest. Right now, the prototype can only run at 12 gigabytes per second, as you can see in the screenshot, but they're hoping that the retail edition will come in at roughly 14 gigabytes per second. 
effectively maxing out that PCI Express 5.0 SSD lane. This is just a continuation of the history that Sprint has had in being first in several different types of SSDs. Some of the fastest 4.0 SSDs came first by Sprint, and they were also one of the first SSD companies to take Steam Deck SSDs seriously with them selling them in various capacities of 256, 512, or even one terabyte, when most of the other SSD companies do not sell that directly to consumers. But Sprint did, and I'm excited to see what they're gonna be doing for 5.0 SSDs in the future. And we're finding out more about AMD's future with the 7800X3D getting their first benchmarks published over on Tom's Hardware. Just as a quick refresher, the 7800X3D is supposed to be launching on April 6th for the price point of $449 or $250 cheaper than the 7950X3D or 150 bucks plus than the 12 core 7900X3D. And the gaming benchmarks do show that it is a powerhouse coming in up to 24% faster than Intel's i9-13900K, 13% in Rainbow Six Siege, but then also coming in faster than the 5800X3D by over 20% in the four games that are actually being published in this benchmark. This is not a robust, complete picture. What we saw with the 7950X3D when that launched was that it really does depend on which video game you are playing. However, if you compare these numbers directly to the 7950X3D, the 7800X3D does exactly what we thought it would do, and that's get within 5% of AMD's flagship $700 CPU. So it just shows that this is probably the chip that everybody is rightfully waiting for, being significantly faster than the 5800X3D, being within spitting distance of the 7950X3D. This CPU does appear like it's gonna be a heavy hitter for people who want the fastest gaming chip on a budget. Yes, you could say the 13900K will beat it in some scenarios, the 7950X3D will beat it in some scenarios, but none of them are gonna match the bang for buck that the 7800X3D is going to deliver to you. And I'm done delivering you the hot news today, my friends. We'll be back here tomorrow for more of the hottest tech news out on the internet. And until then, 